my interest in Cicely Saunders, Saunders started 2006 when I had a sabbatical at Oxford. So I'm a theologian. I'm not a doctor, but I'm also a trained social worker for people with mental disabilities. And in these two aspects, I was willing to find out more about Cicely Saunders in the time I was in Oxford. But my interests were not only an academical one. I'm a theologian and a pastor, ordained pastor, and I be with dying people and their families quite often. At the moment, I live in Basel, surrounded where with a lot of hospitals, two hospices, and um, a growing population of elderly people. And I try my best to be connected with their needs and try to give an answer in the way I can do as a Christian, as a pastor, and a theologian. I could easily start this morning with a lot of theory and research work I've done uh, the last years on Cicely Saunders, but I rather like to start with the Saunders story. And perhaps you know the story quite well. This is a story quite vital to Cicely Saunders theology and spirituality. And after this story, we will get into a more theoretical discussion. I would like to take you with me in the year 1947. So it's a long time ago for you as young students. Just two years after the Second World War. And Saunders, as we know, was then a trained nurse, a social worker, and a Christian. And she met David Tasma in St. Thomas Hospital, a Polish Jew who survived the concentration camps. He was in his 40s, alone and very ill, not knowing, much, not knowing how much time he would have until he would die. And Saunders talked to him very openly. And when he was asking if he had to die soon, she had the strength to tell him the truth. After a few meetings, he told her a lot about his life and beliefs. And he was very open to tell her about his Jewish faith and his questions. So Saunders was not very sure what to do. Was it her job to discuss religion or spiritual questions with a patient? Was it all right to tell a patient about her inner hopes and doubts? But he, David Tasma, kept on asking her if there was such a thing as a real consolation. And she offered to him to read from the Psalms, which is a common ground for Jewish and Christian people. But he refused. No, I only want what is in your heart and mind. So Saunders was forced to listen to her own spirituality. So consolation was not a pill or morphine which she could take from a cupboard. He had to do, it had to do with herself and with her inner beliefs and hopes. So Saunders started to read a lot of theology, philosophy, psychology, and discuss that with friends over decades. 
finding out more of the meaning of the Christian hope or spirituality in general. As you perhaps know, David Tasma died and left her 500 pounds with the wish to build a home, a place for people in need and dying. It was the beginning of an intensive journey to combine the spiritual and the medical vision to build a stopping place for pilgrims, she said. So after hearing this vital Saunders story, we could ask ourselves, OK, we have all these letters and we ho have all these work, research work done, and we have a lot of material how can we find out a little bit more about her spirituality, her spiritual journey? This is not very easy. Saunders, we have heard, studied philosophy, but she was not a theologian. And she was focusing on practical work. So to find out a little bit more about theology, has to do with the reconstruction of her practical work, of her personal experience and reflection. And there is no systematical concept or method behind her spirituality or theology. She was patient orientated and she had a narrative approach towards spirituality and faith. So what I like to do with this with you this morning is to focus very briefly on three different aspects. Firstly, sources of theology in her life and work. Secondly, to look of some of her writings and thirdly, the question, what can we learn from both aspects? I will not talk about the broad discussion about spiritual care at the moment. Perhaps we can do that this afternoon. And I would be very interested to hear your opinions about this. You know this when you have looked into Watch With Me. When this book starts, uh, you can find this quote. I'm sure the most important foundation stone we could have come from the summing up of all the needs of the dying, which was made for us in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the simple words, watch with me. This is also some words according to the Gospel of Mark. So right at the beginning you find um, a very spiritual foundation of her vision. This was, um, uh, she wrote this before uh, St. Christopher Hospice was founded in 65. So Saunders did not choose the Good Samaritan story or a complicated quote from the Bible or some theology or philosophy. For her, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was the accurate picture through she could accompany and be with others in despair and dying. I'm very fascinated about her life and it has a lot to do <clears throat> with different uh, movements she made um, through education, through relationships, through family members. I will not go very deeply into it, but 
It's interesting that Cicely Saunders was not born into a very religious family, even though she was baptized at the Anglican church. So she was telling others in her early years, she was not believing in God. And she went through many years of loneliness herself, doubting and hoping and not sure which way she should go and not sure in whom to trust and what to believe. There was perhaps an aunt, Aunt Daisy, and a few colleagues, but she had not much contact to the Christian faith, faith for a long time. So in a very deep personal crisis, she felt that God was touching her. And she wouldn't be Cicely Saunders if she wasn't willing to put a lot of energy into her search of meaning. And I'm always amazed how much theology and philosophy she read, not only in her early years, but also until she died. And it would be a research area just to focus on her approach to art or aesthetic, like music, painting, and um, other spiritual uh, ground like poetry. This would be very interesting in the future. So now you see Saunders as a very young nurse and Saunders in St. Christopher's. Saunders was not going only through a war time, which seems for us now and here a very long time ago, and a difficult period of professional trainings. She always volunteered in different hospitals until she had her own St. Christopher Hospice. So care was for the dying was more than a job for her. It was her calling. And when she met David Tasma and others, she was convinced she needed to do this in the Christian tradition of discipleship. A calling to welcome people in in their spirit of friendliness and wisdom that every human being is important in the eyes of God and especially those who are weak. We spoke about the four dimensions uh, and you can see this and we heard about the development and I think one of her strong points is that with her calling in the background, she could focus on the patient's needs. Through her dedication and studying, Saunders discovered the four dimensions. And I like to quote just one sentence. You matter because you are. You matter to the last moment of your life and we will do all we can to help you not only to die peacefully, but also to live until you die. So when we go back to, this, to Saunders' spirituality, you have these two dimensions influencing each other. On one side, you have always patient experiences, patients, beliefs, and sources of resilience. And on the other side, you have Saunders' own spiritual life, her sources of theology. And now let's go into these second side, sources of theology. I will call this moment of reflection um, 
finding out more about her spiritual friends. So one friend was C.S. Lewis. You know C.S. Lewis from different novels, perhaps. But perhaps you don't know that he wrote a, a book on pain in the Second World War in 1940. And she met C.S. Lewis and she was fascinating that this amateur, this not, no, he was a writer and a professor of literature, was discussing theology with others in the so-called Socratic society. So it was not, uh, the experiment was not that a Christian talked to another Christian, but everyone was open to ask and uh, ask questions about life, belief, death and doubt. So she got into these kind of discussions to find out about her own spirituality and also to listen to others. And C.S. Lewis was very familiar to a lot of philosophy and the old church fathers. And she learned a lot about Aristotle and Augustine and others through C.S. Lewis, through the eyes of C.S. Lewis. And this was very encouraging. So, another spiritual friend was Olive Wine. Olive Wine was a Scottish theologian. And they were really close before St. Christopher's was founded. So they discussed uh, spiritual matters quite often. And as you notice in the book, Watch With Me, uh, she was referring to Olive Wine at the beginning and in the last chapter, uh, Consider Him. This is a quote of Olive Wine's Three Meditation of the Passion Story. Olive Wine was very interested to see what's going on in Europe after the Second World War. And she said, if you like to understand how to combine the spiritual side and the medical vision you have in mind, you have to travel to Switzerland. So I'm coming from Switzerland, so I'm pleased to tell you <laughs> that she traveled to Switzerland. And she visited a, a very special place. No, I have no picture of this place, called Grand Champ. Perhaps you have heard about Grand Champ. This is a reformed order of people who are uh, like um, Tese in this tradition, being together to find out about uh, spirituality and peace movement, peace movement after the Second World War. <coughs> And she, Saunders, discussed her communal aspect of the hospice with Olive Wine. And Olive Wine helped her to bring the two sides, the medical and spiritual sides, together. Saunders was very fond not only to read theology, but also to get into mystic. And one of the sources she had until she died was Julian of Norwich. The English mystic um, was very important to her in the understanding what can love and compassion mean for us as human beings, how to understand God's love in the midst of suffering. This was one of Julian of Norwich's thoughts and meditation of uh, 
Christianity. There would be a lot to say to it, but I carry on. <laughs> the next spiritual friend was Tyler de Jardin, a French theologian and a scientist. And when you read Cicely Saunders very carefully, and you see that she was a little bit fighting with Tyler de Jardin's idea of the cosmic Christ, or how to bring creation and evolution together, and seeing God's uh, promise and God being alive in creation and evolution. And I think personally that uh, Saunders was so fascinated by Tyler Dujardin because he had this Anselm's aspect of seeking the truth. Fides querens intellectum. That means we not, as human beings, we are limited. We have not the eternal or the whole wisdom. But through our wisdom, wisdom of life, our aspects of spirituality, we are capable to face the others and trying to get into a search of meaning. So Tyler de Jardin, uh, it's very well um, um, written by uh, philosophers and uh, very much discussed by other theologians to find this way of combining rationality and faith. So this is perhaps common ground for you. Viktor Frankl, do you know him? Yes. Yes, I hoped you would. Um, I think he is so, uh, some source of the hospice movement in general. You can't imagine uh, being in a hospice and not hearing about Frankl's ideas and uh, the book Man's Search for Meaning. And also for Sona, this was an authentic way of trying to find meaning um, and go with others through the search of meaning. He was a psychiatrist, the founder of logotherapy, and also a survivor of the concentration camp. And he, said, was is well known as the total pain aspect. He all, already said this very early on, it was wrong to reduce the reality to bios, psyche, and sociality. Human beings need a spiritual telos. So this is the hardcore of Viktor Frankl's idea of being human, to have these four <coughs> sides. So to reflect this in palliative care, in the total pain concept was nothing new. It was not even a Saunders thing. It was given through a, a source of psychology, philosophy, and theology. So this main influence of Viktor Frankl uh, was helping Saunders to get a broader idea of what it could be to develop a spiritual care uh, in the hospice and palliative movement. And there is another source, Henry Nouwen. Perhaps you know some books of Henry Nouwen, do you? Yeah. He, is a, he was a theologian and a professor and a psychologist. And I think he is very strong in seeing that our own spirituality is an important side of helping others. So we can 
we can't just see one patient suffering and staying next to it. It has also something to do with our spirituality. And he said, compassion asks us to go where it hurts, to enter into the places of pain, to share in brokenness, fear, confusion, and anxious. And he wrote this famous book, The Wounded Healer, and Saunders quote, quoted this book quite often. She said, all of us, I think, have to recognize ourselves as wounded healers. It can be our weaknesses that is vulnerable. The God we met in hospice today is the God of I was sick, I was in prison, I was dying. So to find out about the compassion uh, in uh, the spirituality, Henry Nouwen was a great source for Cecily Saunders. Now, do you have energy or are you tired? Are you okay? So, you're laughing, this is a good sign. So on one, one side you have these spiritual sources of philosophy, theology, psychology, and then you, ha you have on, on the other side all the, the writings uh, and we have heard there are many. So I will not go into every writing, but I like to focus on five main examples. So I take you to what you perhaps already know quite well into the writing, Watch With Me. And what we can see there is something we found today very important. How much we can help the patients, there will be always a place where we will have to stop and know that we are really helpless. So to listen and to listen carefully to be there, even without words, is something which remains in palliative care and is still very, very important. Now it comes, Grand Champ. And this time she wrote this article. She had a very intensive contact to the community in Switzerland. And if you come to Switzerland, this is a French part and a very beautiful one. And you still find old sisters which say, oh, Cecily Saunders, yes. Uh, I remember that we had a lot of contact with her and St. Christopher's. The second writing in this book, Watch With Me, uh, called Faith. And here again, you find things which you find very helpless in your own studying and learning about palliative care. So to listen to a concrete life story is very essential. So the spiritual aspect of making space that someone is able to talk about their lives, their experiences, they, their way of looking things, it's very important. And Saunders describes that even we know a lot of a lot of things 
we have to allow that God comes into it and be present and shares suffering. We do not know, she said, why God allows this, but we do know that he will share it. The, this is part of her very strong side of being with the dying, with a hope and faith that this will be not the end. That is what faith is, a gift of love, she said, from love to love. And then she goes to the gesture of, and the symbol of open hands. The third writing in this book, I think it's great that we see here that being in relationship is also a very spiritual aspect in palliative care. Not only the dying patient. The dying patient is not a um, person who is alone. He has friends or she has friends, family members, the staff, the caretakers. To face death, she said, is to face life. And that means that all who, uh, who, uh, who are surrounded in this place of suffering can take part and help to find more out of the mystery of suffering and mystery of meaning in this place and with the dying people. I just like to mention one aspect in the personal therapeutic journey in the fourth writing. It, be, it soon became clear that each death was individual. And I think this is quite important for me to see and also about the discussion how we can understand the process of dying there is no scheme, um, no clear structure of dying. She said, each way is different. And uh, thinking of uh, other discussions like Kubra Ross um, and um, perhaps a new way of understanding the process, I would refer to her that each individual has a, a special way to say goodbye and to let go. So at the end, in Watch With Me, with the writing Consider Him, St. <coughs> Christopher's she described as a religious and medical foundation. And she repeats uh, telling and uh, discussing spiritual friends and sources of her theology. And she said Christ for her comes sometimes incognito to meet those dying. So when we look at this and other writings, you can find out that there are main figures in Saunders' spirituality and theology. Firstly, there is the point that she sees a compassionate God and compassion as central in spirituality and palliative care. And she sees the need for community for human beings and for friendship to feel free to go on the search of meaning. She and her faith allows her to say there is hope against hope, life even when we die. And the mystery is there because we are human beings, we are dependent, vulnerable, and sometimes very broken dying or living.
I looked at different writings in especially the book David mentioned in the selected writings, not only to refer these main aspects to one book or one selection. And you can find these four strong points also in the writings on spirituality in Saunders' work. She once said, only a God whose love fully shares all pain from within can still our doubts and questions, not because we can understand, but because we can trust. <clears throat> I think community and friendship is something we need as human beings wherever where we might be or live, especially at the end of our lives. And she said, the dying need the community. It helps its help and fellowship. The community needs the dying to make it think of eternal issues and to make it listen and to give to others. So. If we and you <coughs> take care of the dying, it's an important part to bring in the search of meaning, the eternal issues into everyday practice that you matter until you die. A community has not only room for sorrow and grief, but also for joy and when I read and listen to Saunders, especially the films and interviews, this is very wonderful to see <coughs> that there was always time for having a birthday cake, singing a song, or uh, having a laugh. And I, I remember telling, uh, seeing her singing with even patients and uh, reflecting on uh, music pieces with them. So it was not a place where you were only confronted with uh, sad stories, uh, but with life and uh, with uh, community, communal issues, also very much of joy and laughter. Hope against hope. I think coming from a place called Basel, and you know, perhaps the famous theologian we had in Basel was Karl Barth, and he was into dialectic theology, means a sentence like hope against hope. So what do you do with that? It's difficult to understand, but it means that even on a place where you have only darkness, you can trust there is light, there is God, there is life. And to bring uh, these two aspects, which are not easy to bring together, um, it stands for a Christian and religious and spiritual hope in many ways. Hope against hope means for Saunders that the Christian believe in a Jesus who suffered, and a cross, which is the center of all centers, she said, the place where time and eternity meet and all our griefs are transformed. So what that means for us today, it's very difficult to say. And perhaps we will have different answers to define hope against hope. But for her, her foundation was very linked to the Christian faith and the hope that in Jesus, in the suffering of Jesus, we can see uh, God's love for us. Life still is a mystery. We can discover a lot of things. But what is life? What is human being? What is 
our earth. No one has an easy answer. Human life is first and all not something we produce, but a mystery and a gift. And God's story can help us to interpret different aspects of life and give us a better understanding of what it means to live our life, lives in something deeper and bigger than ourselves. The story of Jesus remains a scandal in this world, a suffering God who likes to share our own brokenness, a God who gives hope where we see only death and dying. A God who tells each one of us that time and eternity are not only a philosophical topic, but a reality and gives us space for faith and trust so that this kind of spirituality can invite us to have hope even when we have to face suffering and loss. So what is religion and spirituality? And when we think of Cecily Saunders now, is it a strange Christian concept? In Switzerland, you have the idea to quote Cecily Saunders, but without thinking of her as a Christian. So she is popular because she is a pioneer of palliative care, but no one likes to get into her spirituality. So should we do that this morning? You decided to come to listen to me <laughs> and to see that religion is a very strong source in Saunders' work and motivation for palliative care. But she has not only a religious side of thinking and sharing spirituality. She has also a source to see spirituality as a very human, universal aspect for everyone, for every human being. She can see spirituality as becoming, connecting, finding meaning and transcendence without a particular religion and philosophy. So the strong point of Cecily Saunders for the palliative care movement is that she has both sides. She can refer to a religious background, but she can also say, this is not the only way to look at it. There is more to say than to, a special, to, uh, to refer to a special source of religion. Spiritual care for her includes transcending a particular religion or philosophy as well. So wow, this is a strong point. But we have to remember that she was very much connected with her own faith, which was rooted in Jewish Christian tradition and values, habits, habits, and rituals. So there are many interesting little stories I found out in the archive in Lancaster that she, had, she kept all different um, little um, prayer notes and letters and Bible quotes. And if she started uh, to find some Christophers, she, Every day had a special Bible quote in the daily light. She uh, was making notes what she find out on her spiritual journey. So you, on one side, you have this strong approach to Christianity. On the other hand, she was aware that life is a mystery. And if God is alive, he will touch the suffering and the dying wherever they might be, and this transcending <coughs> all we know and can put in concept and doctrines. Main aspects of Saunders spirituality and theology. 
I think one strong point is the universal aspect of spirituality. And I would call it, and others call it as well, as the Anglo-Saxon tradition of spirituality. This is one strong point in her spiritual setting. The other thing is what we call a special tradition and practice, like others refer to the Roman understanding of spiritualité. That means that you are bound to a certain kind of practice, rules, and traditions. And the third strong aspect of Saunders spirituality is also a ecumenical aspect, wanting to combine and find out that Christian is not one church, one aspect, one uh, law. There is something behind the Christian mystery combining different ways of looking at it, an ecumenical openness to different practices, even in the Christian environment and tradition. Christ present with the suffering is one of our key moments for Christian spirituality. And then I call that theopathetic tradition and social engagement. There's a dissertation of a Dutch, um, Dutch theologian, and he observed this kind of movement in Great Britain, that it has a long tradition to see the love of God and the suffering God in Christ together with a social engagement. And um, as David Clark mentioned, your mother volunteered in the 50s and 60s in, in one of the hospitals you grew up. In Switzerland, there is not such a tradition of volunteering. I don't know how this is in Spain, but in uh, Great Britain, there is this social engagement in a very strong way. This is uh, something very special. And it has something to do um, with this tradition that uh, social care and Christian tradition belongs together. Um, and I think this is also a main aspect in Saunders' upbringing and writing and seeing her social engagement in palliative care and hospice work. As you perhaps know, she, uh, as you perhaps know, she was married to an artist, Marian Bohus, a Polish painter. And when I was in St. Christopher's, there were many paintings. And uh, one of the paintings I find very touching was um, this wounded Christ. And uh, so seeing death with the hope of Easter, hope of resurrection, and I think Christ sharing and therefore transforming suffering was something which was and is still very important for Saunders and the palliative care engagement. Thank you for listening.